So in this week's video, and following the Facebook flop, frankly an embarrassment for Wall Street and all concerned, um, let's take a look at what an IPO is, an initial public offering. For novices, I'm going to go back one step and just explain how companies raise finance, and then we'll get straight in to where an IPO fits in, and I'll give you some guidance on whether I think you should try and join in an IPO, even if you're given the opportunity. Now, anyone who bought Facebook might say the answer to that question is pretty obvious with hindsight, but actually I'm going to give you a broader picture on why I don't think buying IPOs is a fabulous idea as a retail investor. Okay, so you're a company, you're looking to raise money, all right, where do you go? Well, there are basically four places you can go to raise money. You can do it yourself. You can grow a company organically, as it's called. That is simply saying we make enough profits as a little private company, we make enough cash flow, we can just grow ourselves. We don't need to ask anybody outside for finance. And that's cheap, and that's fast, and that's nice work if you can get it. So there's number one. However, sooner or later, you're probably going to need to expand the business and get outside finance. So, a couple of other ways to do it. A bank loan, maybe secured on assets that you own, a bit like a mortgage for an individual, okay? Or you can issue bonds. And in another video, I deal with bond basics, part one and part two. A bond is a tradable piece of paper. It's effectively a loan broken up into chunks and sold to investors. So you can do a bond market issue. And do take a look at my videos if you're not sure about that. So we've got organic growth. We've got a bank loan. We've got a tradable bank loan, a bond if you like. And finally, and I mean finally because it's usually the most expensive way to do it, you've got a share issue. And that's where IPOs fit in. All right? Now, why do I say that's the fourth option, not the first? Well, because shareholders, don't forget, if you invite them in to your business, new shareholders are taking quite a lot of risk. That is because if your company goes bust, they're the lowest in the queue to get their money back. And dividends are paid after interest on things like bank debt. All right? So, normally, raising money by issuing shares via an IPO is an expensive way to raise capital, not just because of the fees you pay to the banks who advise you, but also because your shareholders, quite rightly, are quite a demanding bunch of investors to keep happy once you've done it. So, IPOs are the usually the first way a company approaches the equity market looking to raise fresh capital. Okay. Now, what type of company are we talking about? One of the reasons why people tend to pile into IPOs is there are not that many of them, okay? The public company, as it's called, which is the vehicle you use to raise money via an initial public offering, is a kind of dying beast. And there are many papers written about why that is, and I won't try and cover that here, all right? But let's just have a think about the types of company out there before we go into the pros and cons of an IPO, all right? You've got what are called public companies, and you've got what are called private companies, all right? And in the UK, they normally have the limited LTD badge of the name, all right? So XYZ Limited, Morgan Cars Limited, whatever it happens to be. Now, most companies are privately owned, okay? They're owned by the directors, the people who set them up, and you and I can't normally buy shares in them unless those directors choose to sell, okay? So it's kind of a closed shop, if you like. And most companies are that by number. The vast majority of companies are privately owned. Some of them are very small, okay? Over here, you've got public companies, much fewer in number, and you've got two types. You've got the listed PLC, that's where an IPO fits in, in just a moment. And you've got, just for completeness, the unlisted PLC, public limited company. Now, it, oh, now, don't get confused, an IPO is a way of raising money if you are a listed PLC. But just be aware that out there, there are these unlisted PLCs. Um, now, if you're into football, all right, very quick example, Arsenal Football Club is a public company, but you won't find its shares at the London Stock Exchange, okay? Um, so, what that means is, Arsenal is owned by people who are not just the directors, some fans have shares, so it is a public company, it's opened itself up to other investors, but it doesn't have a listing on, say, the New York Stock Exchange or the London Stock Exchange. So the shares are relatively illiquid, but in theory, you can buy and sell them in the kind of over-the-counter market. 
provided you can find someone else willing to do a trade with you. All right. So over here, uh, and companies move around, by the way. So if you're into football, Arsenal is an unusual company. It's an unlisted PLC. This is UK football clubs. The vast majority of clubs are privately owned all right, by Russians and Americans on the whole these days. All right. And one or two sometimes find their way over here and become listed. All right. So a few years ago, I could have put Man United here, a fully listed PLC. Look up the share price in the London Stock Exchange and so on. But since the Glazer family took it over, it's migrated over there. All right. So now, in order to buy shares in Manchester United, no point in going to your stockbroker and saying, get me shares because they're on the London Stock Exchange. They're not. You'd have to phone the Glazer family, hope they're in a good mood, and see if they'll slip you a few shares in a private deal. All right. So IPOs are all about this bit of the market. All right. And it's not very many companies. In London, we're talking just a few thousand companies out of a massive universe. All right. So be aware, the reason shares, shareholders and investors get excited about IPOs, and I have some sympathy with this, is because they think, well, here's an opportunity for me to actually buy into one of the best companies in the country. All right. True. And there are not that many of them in reality. But that's still not a reason to jump in and buy IPO shares, as I'll explain in just a moment. Right. Now, something else we need to know about IPOs. All right. We're saying that the companies that are involved in IPOs are public companies. They're looking to list for the first time. Why? Because they want to raise money, they want to bring in new shareholders, and they're prepared to put up with all the headaches that go with being a listed PLC. If you're thinking, you know, why don't more companies do this? Why are there so few? Why a few thousand? Why not loads more? The answer is it's kind of a pain. Listed companies have to produce accounts more often. They've got more regulations to follow. They get more scrutiny in the press. They get criticized when they pay the directors lots of money. Okay, it's kind of a hassle. All right, so for quite a few firms, listing is not the answer. But clearly, for a lot, it is a good way to raise money. So IPOs, let's take a look at IPOs. Let's focus in on those. After all, that is the theme of this video. Um, so in principle, if I'm looking to raise money as a company, okay, I can either do what is sometimes, this is a bit of a jargon tour, either do a placement or a public offer. So once I've decided I want to make my shares available, not just amongst my board directors, but other people as well, bring them in, um, I can either do a placement or a public offer. All right? And this is kind of where uh, companies have a choice. What's the difference? Well, this one is what it sounds like. This is making new shares available to the public. All right, you, you issue a prospectus, um, you send out uh, letters and so on, you invite people to buy the shares, and there's normally a deadline to apply. Over here, you've got the placement. Now, what's the difference? Well, the placement, what a company is doing is approaching institutional investors only, okay? And normally it will bring in a bank to help it, okay? So if you're a company looking to do a placement, You'll get some advisors on board, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, whoever it happens to be. They'll help you with the pricing, the timing, the contact book you want to run. Okay, and that means going around talking to various potential clients who might be interested in buying shares. So they'll be getting in contact with pension funds, life insurance companies, fund managers, and so on, and doing a kind of road show, going around, seeing how much interest there is in the shares of this new company. And then when, when you get to the deadline day, if you like, they will be placed with those specific institutions. Does it sound like a bit of an old boys club? Okay, a nice cozy arrangement. Well, that's exactly what it is. Okay, the company will raise the capital it wants. Okay, the institutional investors will get the block investment they want in the new company. Okay, some of them may have to because they offer you know index tracking and so on. And of course, the advisors, the investment banks, the JP Morgans and so on, take out a fat fee usually a percentage of the amount raised. Very nice. All right. Public offer. Now you can split this, by the way, you can do, if you're a new company, you could do 75% like that and 25% like that. That's just me making up numbers or 90, 10 or 50, 50. But you can also offer shares to the public. Okay. More of a hassle, frankly. The regulation is tighter because you're selling shares to the public. Okay. Um, the administration is much more involved. Okay. Because you've got to deal with oversubscriptions, that's too many people applying for the shares on a popular offer, and you've got to deal in both cases with undersubscriptions, that's not enough people applying to buy the shares the company wants to sell. Then what happens? 
The answer is the advisor will normally underwrite the whole thing. And that means the JP Morgans of this world not only advise the company that's trying to sell these shares on the method, the timing, the price and so on, but they also say if the public don't want the shares, we'll step in and buy them at a prearranged price. That's called underwriting. Okay, so my point being that public offers are usually more hassle. So unless a company's got a reason to approach the public to sell shares to it, they'll often not bother. And that gives you a clue as to what I think about IPOs. All right. Because companies will sometimes say, we, we, we want to bring in the public when we sell our shares for the first time. We want to create a kind of shareholding democracy. As a football club, we want our fans to own shares. As a telecoms company, we want our customers to own shares. Okay? As a social networking firm, we want the world to own our shares. Okay? It's all kind of marketing claptrap in a way. It can be a sign, I'd say, of a little bit of desperation. I mean, if you can offload your shares this way, why would you do it that way, which is frankly more work, costs more, more hassle, okay? And the answer's gotta be sometimes, mm, we're a little bit anxious, we wanna get rid of the shares. Okay, maybe the retail investors out there will take them, when other investors possibly, we've gotta work harder on the institutions to get them to do a deal, all right? So, what do I think of IPOs? Would I buy IPOs? Now, people might say, well, obviously, Tim, Facebook's just happened when this video is being made. Okay, so there's a clear example of where an IPO has gone a bit wrong. All right, well, that's not the only IPO to go wrong. Okay, so my view is there are three or four reasons why, personally, I'd be very, very, very wary of buying shares in an IPO company, even though it's tempting. Okay, even though you might want to get in on the first day of trading and so on. Number one, okay, when companies do IPOs, that involve the public, you have to ask the question, are they getting a little bit desperate to raise capital? Why are they going through all these hoops? I've just dealt with that just now. Number two, how much do you know about this company? This is the first time it's raised money publicly. Right? This is the first time it's had to, you know, probably publish pro proper sets of accounts, comply with regulation. I mean, how much have you known about what was probably a privately owned company up to this point that you're prepared to commit your ca capital to it right now? Surely better to wait till it's been in the public domain for at least a few months and then decide if you want to buy the shares, all right? Because otherwise you'll be, you might get caught up in marketing hype about the latest mining firm or local social networking firm. When you stand back and ask yourself, what do I actually know about this thing and its business model? The answer is probably not a whole lot. So there's another reason to at least wait, okay? Next, you get stock drops, okay? Three or four months after an IPO, you can find, and this is true with uh, Facebook, obviously it looks like it's gonna be true with Facebook, uh, Google, Groupon, LinkedIn, the share price drops below the IPO price. Okay, now that can be for various reasons. Okay, maybe the IPO price was ridiculously optimistic, or maybe, maybe it's a combination of that, and employees working for the firm that's gone public were locked in for a few months, and then they dump all their shares, which temporarily causes a price dip. But the bottom line is, often if you wait, you'll get in at a better price than the IPO price, okay? And finally, when Wall Street and the media get so excited about something, all right, that you seem to hear about it everywhere, every time you pick up a newspaper, you've got to think, do I really want a part of this? Okay, and with some of the social networking firms, there's huge frenzy, it's like the dot-com boom all over again. Okay, there's huge excitement, lots of analyst coverage, lots of media coverage, all of it positive, and as a slightly cynical contrarian investor, you have to ask yourself the question, do I want to go in on the back of all this hype? Okay, so to wrap up, what we said is companies have a range of ways of raising funds. They don't always go for share issues, but if they do, the initial public offering is the buzzword that describes a company going to the public, probably for the first time, to raise capital. Okay. Next thing you need to be aware of is that people get excited about IPOs because not that many companies are public, so they want a piece of the action. But my advice is wait. Okay. By all means, get a piece of the latest action on Wall Street. And my advice would be hold back for at least three or four months. Let the dust settle. Let the share price find a more sensible level than perhaps the IPO price. And then if you want to go in, okay, get in at what I describe as a more valuable price than the one that perhaps day one's trading revealed.